your history Buildings and people and memories and dreams Who better to tell us than those who were there There's so much to learn from the stories they'll share Living history Hello, I'm Ted Goldsboro and the program is called Living History. Today we have with us two people who live in Narbrook Park in Narbrook. Their names are Mrs. Salama and Dr. Reed. And today we'd like to start off uh, with uh, talking about the history of Narbrook Park and how in about 1917, 18, mm -hmm. uh, the Narbrook Park Improvement Association, which had been part of <laughs> Narbrook Borough. It actually hadn't existed and Hadn't existed then. until 1914-15. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But uh, where is it that uh, we're going? <laughs> I forget. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, we now have uh, the people in the park own the park in common, and we take care of it in common. Mm -hmm. And we have the Narbrook Park Improvement Association, which is an incorporated uh, organization. But we meet, we, we are uh, obliged to meet at least once a year. And we meet in February for a, uh, a business meeting. But we also meet in um, spring and again in the fall. And at those meetings, we do whatever maintenance we are that needs to be done and that we are able to get done. Mm -hmm. And uh, that can go from uh, filling in holes in the road, uh, filling in potholes, to uh, doing some trimming, to clearing out uh, sewers, that is storm sewers, um, to uh, maintaining the brook, mm -hmm. just all sorts of things. Mm -hmm. and. Um, we always have uh, something to eat along with that. And uh, a thing that's kind of fun, I think, is that uh, <clears throat> people who live on one side of the park bring a sweet, mm -hmm. and the people who live on the other side of the park <laughs> bring a savory. <laughs> and that savory is a kind of British term, which yes. comes from one of our former residents who had lived in England. Mm -hmm. She called it savory, so we continue to do that. Mm -hmm. And then the next year we reverse, and you, if you oh, brought a savory, you bring a sweet. Mm -hmm. But uh, there's a lot of work to be done, a lot of work that gets done. Mm -hmm. right. what, what had happened in the early years of the uh, park, when the uh, Civic Association started the idea, there weren't many residents to do anything, and probably not as much to be done. They were busy building their homes. but as the houses were there and residents were there, um, the Civic Association felt that their task here was done. So they gave over responsibility to the Narbrook Park Improvement Association, that's our community's association. And then uh, sometime later, in 1925, the central area was literally deeded, which is mm -hmm. to the Improvement Association, which is why it had to become incorporated and why to this day we share common membership and responsibility. But it's mm -hmm. actually a great deal of fun. People look forward mm -hmm. to the park cleanups mm -hmm. and, and create other events, too. Mm -hmm. uh, most years, somebody volunteers their home for a Halloween party, and the mm -hmm. children enjoy mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. We also have a uh, holiday party. Mm -hmm. Party mm -hmm. at the Christmas season. Mm -hmm. Are there and we have luminaria? Yes. yes. We have okay. lovely luminaria. One park okay. member takes responsibility for that. Okay. And uh, These are lights in a paper bag, mm -hmm. or candles. Right. And a, right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And the park looks sort of magical when yes. it really does. Yes. When they're when if, they're if we're lucky, now are you, also are snow. you going to someone's house when when that occurs or mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. okay yeah we are kind of yeah. lighting we the are. way right yeah. okay and then uh, we usually go caroling right. at least part yeah. of the group mm -hmm. goes caroling mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and uh, you know everybody joins mm -hmm. in. Right. Are there jobs for kids to do on park cleanup <laughs> days? Lots of jobs. One might Lots say the kids do the heavy lifting. I think we have <laughs> pictorial evidence to that effect. Uh -huh. 
but they usually enjoy it. There's always something they can do, and they feel definitely a membership in the community. Mm -hmm. um, in fairness, uh, you having lived in the park a long time, we have documentary evidence of contributions you made as a youth to the park in terms mm -hmm. of work right. activities, and and also that it seemed to be fun. We have a picture of you and a friend in mm -hmm. matching Dennis right. the Menace outfits, mm -hmm. I call them, <laughs> um, living, right. playing, and working in the okay. park. That other person, and we happen to have the photo here with me, was named Billy Heisler. Mm -hmm. And Billy's family, Mary Denny and, and Frank Denny, I don't think they lived in about maybe 10 or 15 years at uh, most. Maybe, uh -huh. yeah. Uh, That's but, all. Uh, <laughs> He, he's missing a strap on his trousers there. Mm -hmm. I was amazed that my mother, even at an early age, had put me in suspenders <laughs> uh, carrying on the tradition. Sure, of course. <laughs> right. Before and after. Yeah. Um, some of the houses are on quite a steep hill. Mm -hmm. And I wondered, uh, Elaine, mm -hmm. how did the um, planners, the landscapers, provide for that? What did they mm -hmm. do? To, to prevent erosion, how did that work? Well, I think what you're referring to is uh, the landscape that was originally uh, designed to be the park sort of has a lower flat area that's usually it's kind of a north-south undulating greensward, but the west side is a fairly steep hill, and uh, the designers actually terraced a big stretch of it because I think that was a popular landscape mode at the time, and it also helped to prevent erosion and created some visual mm -hmm. interest. So. Uh, the old pictures of the park, like the one that you have here, show that linear, you know, terraced arrangement. Mm -hmm. And I'm told by a reliable source that it was a bear to mow. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. Especially before power mower. Yes. <laughs> yes. Now, some of the activities for kids. Mm -hmm. What did maybe adults partook too? But yes. What What is that? Well, sledding was a big thing. <laughs> Always is. And yeah. every person I have talked to who used to live in the park has talked about remembering sledding on the hill, mm -hmm. sledding on the semicircle. Yes. It was great fun. Yeah. You have a picture here in times past. This is the service drive, one of the drives that was designed to uh, allow cars access without having the common area be you know, littered with cars. Um, but it was appropriate use for sledding. It has a fairly mm -hmm. long decline uh, mm -hmm. towards the street. And of course, now they do. Um, within the horseshoe, uh, park members' children get out mm -hmm. and ride in that. And mm -hmm. I love coming home in the afternoon when it's snowed and hearing the peals of laughter <laughs> and just knowing that's going on. <laughs> Some, you know, because we were kids doing this, uh, we got, we knew that having ice on top of the snow would be special. <laughs> yes. So right. we would go in and get buckets of water and pour them down the driveway. <laughs> well, of course, people, working people like Mr. Wilmington, uh, we're thrilled with <laughs> he that. He didn't really? like that because yeah. we'd turn it into an ice skating rink. Right. But boy, it sure made the sleds go fast. I bet it did. <laughs> uh, is there a problem, uh, or could there be a problem with cars? in the park, like on the common areas, so and what are some of the problems there? I would say lack of parking space. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, the park was designed <coughs> back in 1914, 1915, <coughs> so that was before there were so many cars. Mm -hmm. At that time, if a family had a car, that was something. Even through the 20s, 30s, mm -hmm. 40s, I would say, mm -hmm. one car was what most families mm -hmm. had, if they had a car at all. Mm -hmm. These days, everybody in the family winds up mm -hmm. having a car. Mm -hmm. so Where do you park them? Well, yeah. that's a big question. <laughs> <laughs> he who knows the answer to that, right. you know. Well, and Pope actually wrote about, you know, his plan <laughs> with the uh, cars. The service drives were his acknowledgement that cars were a new and coming thing. And they did a scientific evaluation about how many cars there would be oh. and tried to provide for those oh. um, shortly after the turn of the century. Um, so there are some, uh, between the park road and the private property and the sidewalk um, are you know eight foot green strips, some of which have cutouts for parking. And the object was to be able to pull off and discharge your passengers without being on the driveway, basically. Mm -hmm. um, it, the roads are wide enough in most parts for people to pass the folks that are mm -hmm. parked there, but mm -hmm. it was not really how the road was designed. Are most of the roads one lane wide? I mean, the, the common road? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
it is used as one lane. It's two cars wide mm -hmm. for the most part. Okay. But those pull-offs got that car off to off the side. Mm -hmm. yeah. They did. Yeah. Do mm -hmm. the park houses have garages? <laughs> some of them do. Not all. Mm -hmm. Not all. Yeah. But some of the garages are too small for today's, for today's cars. Or, or you can get the car in, but you can't open yeah. the door. <laughs> so. And today we have power mowers and snow blowers, and mm -hmm. which we didn't have in the old days. Uh, I meant to ask you, and we only have a few minutes left in this first segment, I meant to ask you how the Narbrook Park gets money today to pay for grass cutting and snow plowing and tree trimming and who does that? Dues. Dues. Yeah, we pay because oh, the okay. residents of the park mm -hmm. maintain the park. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's actually a common question that we get from our Narbrook neighbors. You know, well, mm -hmm. Why would you have private access to that street? And Arbor takes care of it, but and it's in fact supported by our own dues. Okay. Does the borough of Narbrith plow, or somebody plows, or no. an independent contractor? No, we pay. We uh, hire. We a pay to have the yeah. road plow. Mm -hmm. okay. Years yeah. and years ago, the borough did it, but mm -hmm. no longer. Okay. Mm -hmm. I don't even okay. know if they have snow plows anymore in the borough. Oh sure. They oh, do. I think so. Yeah. yeah. Their yeah. own trucks. I believe so. I, don't I think, think so. so, but I'm not sure. Okay, okay. It's unrelated. Official anyway. looking yellow trucks. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I okay. Think so. Now, uh, where do we where do we go next on our outline, well, uh, Dr. Reed? <laughs> Shall we talk about some of the famous people who oh, I was going to say, let's do people. Yeah. <laughs> let's do people. <laughs> we need to talk about Victoria. Oh, yes. who is yes. Victoria? Victoria Donahoe is our um, the longest uh, resident, longest yes. residing person mm -hmm. in right. the park. Mm -hmm. She was born in the park and has lived there her whole life. Recently retired from the Enquirer, where she was a uh, art critic. She's an art historian by trade, by training, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and the single most thorough repository of any information related to Narberth mm -hmm. and the park and probably Lower Marion. Uh, we have to wrap up uh, this first segment. But we'll be back after the break. This is Ted Goldsboro of Living History, talking with Mrs. Salama and Dr. Reed. <laughs>